Designers behind games, apps, and websites are becoming better and better at making their product as attractive as possible. Today, I'll be explaining what they are doing to get people hooked. In the beginning of the 20th century, psychologist Edward Thorndike wrote about the law of effect, which says that rewarded actions tend to be repeated. In the years following Thorndike's findings, other researchers sought to understand behavioral patterns more deeply. In 1957, Furster and Skinner published Schedules of Reinforcement, which described how we can arrange consequences of behavior to produce different behavioral patterns. A reinforcement is a type of consequence that increases the rate of a behavior. Reinforcement can be done in two ways. Positive reinforcement is when a behavior produces a type of reward that increases the rate of this behavior. As an example, a student raises his hand in class and is praised by the teacher. This pushes the student towards increasing the number of times he raises his hand in class. The behavior of raising his hand was reinforced by the teacher's praise. On the other hand, negative reinforcement is when a behavior produces the removal of something that's negative or undesired from the environment, which increases the rate of that behavior. As an example, a dog's barking bothers his owners. The owner, annoyed by the dog's barking, gives the dog a treat to make him stop. The removal of the dog's barking has increased how many times the owners give him treats. In this way, you can say that behavior of giving treats was negatively reinforced by the removal of barking. Alright, enough with the theory. What does it have to do with games and apps? Games are usually made with a mix of consequences, such as positive reinforcement, as in a score to be beaten, pleasant graphics or positive social interactions, and negative reinforcement, such as enemies trying to kill you, a ticking timer, or the possibility of dying in the game, and so on. Now, remember Skinner and Furster. In their book, they showed that different arrangements of reinforcement produce different patterns of behavior. These arrangements are called schedules of reinforcement. There are two main types of schedules. Continuous schedules, where every action is reinforced, or partial schedules, where only some of the actions are reinforced. Continuous schedules are very important for first establishing new behaviors. It's like pressing a key on your keyboard. If it works properly, it will respond every time you press it. Now, partial schedules are a world apart from continuous schedules. Let's start with time-based schedules. If the time between reinforcements is always the same, it's a fixed interval schedule. It's like getting your paycheck. It always comes after a fixed amount of time. If the time between reinforcements is random, it's a variable interval schedule. It's like checking your phone. You never know when those notifications are coming, but you keep checking it. It produces stronger behaviors than fixed intervals, but it's also known to produce superstitious behavior, such as performing a rain dance to call up the rain to come. There's a very nice experiment done by Skinner himself, which teaches pigeons to be superstitious. I'll leave the link down below. Now, let's talk about when we classify those schedules by the ratio, or the amount of reinforcement a behavior produces. You guessed it, there are fixed and variable types of schedule. Fixed ratio schedules are when a fixed number of behaviors are required for reinforcement. It's like in Super Mario, where every hundred coins, no more, no less, gives you an extra life. Now, variable ratio schedules are when it's set. You don't know how many actions you need to take, to produce reinforcement, or the size of the reinforcement that's coming. Some call it the slot machine effect, and it's the best tool to strengthen behaviors and avoid forgetting them. Not many games look like slot machines, so it's harder for us to associate it with gambling. Almost every game in the App Store has some form of loot box through in-game purchases, which is a practice that has been recently banned in Belgium. Going back to games. Some of them have a very intricate progression system with fixed and variable and ratio and interval-based uh, schedules of reinforcement, which is a fantastic recipe to maintain playing behavior for as long as possible. And you might think that some game developer just got lucky and people got hooked to their games, but behavioral engineering is a thing. And behavioral engineering consultants work alongside game developers to make games as addictive as possible. Any good game app or website uses innumerable quirks and devices to keep 
people coming back again and again. Now, whether that's a good or a bad practice, it boils down to those who play and those who sell the games. Those technologies have a lot to teach us about learning and motivation and can be useful for teaching and working environments. It's what we call gamification. Do you agree with this video? If you have any questions, please leave a comment below, share it on social media and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching.